Hey, hey, welcome back to the experience share. My name is Blake and this is the final round of the Sorcery League before we go into top cut. Thank you all so much for watching. Let's get into the gameplay. All right. Taking a look here at our opening hand, we see an apprentice wizard. That's really good. We see a Geisswood. That's awesome here. And then a Ruins. Really solid cards. Oh, we don't really want Scarabs here. So I should have mulliganed away the Scarabs. Scarabs is not going to be a card that you really want to keep. You have Highland Falconer to be able to pull those cards out of the deck here but whenever i'm see sorcerer i'm thinking sorcerer aggro and so i'm probably kept this in response of it trades up with a lot of minions that our opponent might be playing and we get pseudo punished here by drawing the falconer off the top we're gonna go ruins pass as we look into what type of deck our opponent is playing clamor of harpies here really really strong into this matchup being able to remove a uh, quite a few of these annoying two power minions like a violin or um, the core uh, kobold so opponent playing river of flame really good spot right there it means my death speaker is always going to be in danger Angel's Egg off the top, though, is a really good card to see when you're going into a Sorcerer Aggro deck. Uh, so here you'll see we are playing the Falconer out rather than just playing the Scarabs. Uh, this helps thin the deck, making our draws better every single turn after this. But it does the same job as getting down the Scarabs. So pretty good opening start here for us. Bedrock coming down into a Root Spider. That's going to be annoying for us to be able to deal with. Uh, Spider there, I'm guessing he's not going to give us some easy sites to be able to go to. Violent, not going to do a whole bunch for us here. Uh, play the Ruins and then plan Apprentice Wizard to draw. I probably should have played a little bit more of an aggressive site placement, but I'm thinking after I drew the Pilgrim, that I'm going to want to head over to the corner to be able to draw a card. Now, one thing what you'll see is going forward, the more experience that I got with the deck, the more I realized the importance of playing defensively, moving over towards the corners. But getting big time punished here by our opponent, and they are able to move the root spider under are three of our minions and then they play imperial road ramping out an extra um, site when we weren't able to play anything and so this drawing spell after spell not very advantageous here for us and our opponent able to fire off a firebolt killing everything in its path And our opponent has their own angel's egg here. And so that's going to make, this is going to be quite the grindy game. All right. So you play arid desert. Uh, sure. Ping the root spider. It's not going to do anything for us. I did not go into the corner. Um, which is kind of interesting. I didn't want them to cut me off by playing a site down. It was kind of what my thought process was there. Uh, but that did make us a little less efficient on this play here. But our opponent being on the Geisswood put one of their spider on our Geisswood to prevent us from being able to uh, get Genesis effects and then Death Rite effects on that site. Opponent passing it over to us with a double root spider. We have a watchtower where we can go ahead and play two, get the pilgrim. Now, pilgrim's really strong because it can draw either sites or spells. So it's basically a better land surveyor in a lot of these cases here. Uh, you just have to play it more or less on turn three because that's when you can get your first site into the corner. Apprentice wizard coming down here, allowing us to be able to draw a card and draw pilgrim number two. But you can just look at the card advantage that this deck is able to get now. Sorcerer Aggro is going to be able to start drawing two cards of turn, and so we're going to have to do the same thing if we want to remain, maintain and keep parity. They are going to slide their spider under our Death Speaker, turning off our Apprentice Wizard, and then play a Dragonette. 
I like to pick who they hit here. Do they hit me for one? Or do they hit the apprentice wizard? Opponent getting the dispel out of the common sense. Probably guessing that uh, what I'm going to want to do is going to be cast. Put a summoning sphere Nimbus Gen combo here. We draw a sight. Getting a Vesuvius. My question here is can this kill underground units? And the answer is yes. Vesuvius does deal damage everywhere. And so we're tapping to play the site. Can't do anything with the Apprentice Wizard because of the Root Spider. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we can play a Pilgrim out in the corner and an Angel's Egg. Uh, damage is not... It's going to be hard for us to do anything with that. Uh, Vesuvius does also kill the Dragonettes. And so we're going to go ahead, blow up the Vesuvius, take three damage, go down to 16. A Princess Wizard is going to die as well here. Pay to draw a card. We can cast the Brows if we want. We also haven't cast the Minion from our graveyard, so I wouldn't hate just drawing a card with the Apprentice Wizard saving the Brows. But here we go. Go ahead and play the Brows here. And then Grandmaster Wizard or Philosopher's Stone is kind of the question here. And you see me thinking about the Bane Widow for removal, uh, but really what we need is we need to keep drawing cards. And so I'm putting these now on the bottom of my deck. And yep, that's that's gonna be all that we're gonna be able to do here. So I really would have rather pay. Oh, that's right. I do have three mana left uh, because it would trigger the fact that I played the Vesuvius and then it blew up triggered that I should have had six mana at the four of the turn. And so I did have the extra mana to be able to play the Angel's Egg here. Uh, so we'll go up to 17. Kobolds will come down. I'm going to guess it's going to strike my Pilgrim versus striking itself. End of turn kills the Pilgrim. I go back up to 18. Draw a sight. Uh, we can go ahead replace the Vesuvius with a desert. It's not going to be doing too much for us, but Clamor of Harpies is going to be able to pull over the Kobolds and kill it. And then we're going to cast the Wafering Pilgrim in the corner to be able to draw yet another card. And we're going to start walking this Pilgrim all the way across the map here. So we can draw another card. And what we're looking for now is just to max out our hand size to be able to play the uh, Nimbus Gin and get the combo off here. Pings the Harpies for one. Kobolds comes down. And then we'll strike the Harpies. Or maybe the Pilgrim. We'll have to see what he does here. Opponent's still thinking through what the right decision is going to be. Now, if he does strike the Harpies because it is on Geisswood, it will trigger its Genesis effect. All right, so our opponent here was able to, to find the ruling. And yes, it does trigger on the effect, but it does not trigger if it's buried because it does say target. And so when he buries the Harpies, there's no nothing for it to be able to target to be able to pull over now if there was a root spider underground it would be able to pull that over and strike it we are at six mana here drawing a sight for turn gonna be able to play out the watchtower in the corner uh, and then we can go ahead and cast harpies to remove the kobolds and that costs four mana then with the remaining two we just go ahead play out a scarabs and we will finish this up 
For Town of the Sun, do I need to hold the core for three damage or do I go ahead and play it to ramp up one? And we go ahead and decide to hold it in our hand so that way we can use that as an extra discard later on. Opponent drawing a Philosopher's Stone here, going to give them potentially two mana worth of ramp. Feels pretty good when you're Sorcerer Aggro and you're on six mana. All right. And with that, we're just searching for a summoning sphere, trying to draw as many cards as we can to be able to get a summoning sphere. We go ahead and drop down the, yep, Grandmaster Wizard onto the Geist Wood. Have one mana left. We're trying to decide do we want to play the Amethyst Core or not. And there's potentially an argument not to attack with the Scarabs because then it would, if you know, if he came in to attack, I'd be able to draw off the Geist Wood with the Grandmaster Wizard. If he tried to remove it, it would still draw off the Grandmaster Wizard. And if he tried to attack the site below, I could fly in and block. But then Blaze would have been a huge blowout for me. So both of us with Angel's Egg here. It's going to be a tough game for us to be able to finish. But he goes Gigantism, Blaze, comes in, hits my site. I take seven. Grandmaster Wizard dies. I draw three spells. And he's actually on our site now. So we just need to discard seven cards to be able to hit him for death's door. We draw the angel's egg. But it's just a, a math point now. Go ahead and pay six for the Nimbus Gym. We need to discard seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to guess Jihad. I don't know why we hang on to the second Angel's Egg. That should have been one of the ones to go ahead and getting rid of here but our opponents at death's door not going to be able to heal we are moving over with our avatar and that movement there was just our opponent saying hey i wish i would have just come straight down and attack the site i told him that was fine that he could move there i'd still be able to cast an ambition on top And at this point, our opponent goes ahead and concedes. And so with that, Matt, wrapping up game eight, we finish the league six and two. So we are going to go into the playoff rounds. I'm still tweaking this oops, all minions aggro or control deck here. I plan on playing that going into the Sorcery League Championship. Hopefully I'll be able to catch you in that series. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye.